I don't know what that was. Is this like a salute? I, mean, I don't know what that is. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini. I'm a diagnostic radiologist doing a subspecialty training in interventional radiology in New York City. Now, as a radiologist who has essentially mastered all of human anatomy, a little humble brag there, I often get asked how the heck I learned it all. Luckily, you don't have to look any further because I decided to make a video entirely on how I learned human anatomy. But you probably already know that from the title of this video, so let's go ahead and stop wasting time and just get into it. Let's go. Hit that intro. My light keeps blinking. Great. All right, so I'm basically going to talk about the resources I use to learn anatomy so well, and then I'll give you some tips along the way, and we'll kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and get started here with arguably the most important part of learning human anatomy, and that is which human anatomy textbook or human anatomy atlas you need to buy. Okay, so I'm mainly going to talk about what resources I use to learn anatomy and a couple tips along the way. I think I already said that. I don't know. I forgot. Okay, so let's talk about the most daunting process of learning anatomy, and that is deciding which human anatomy atlas you're going to pick up. This was like the hardest part for me. I swear I spent like many nights researching anatomy books, looking through my friends' anatomy books in med school, trying to figure out what was the best resource for me, and I ultimately decided I won. Also, this sticks out so well in my mind, and that was almost 10 years ago, I was trying to decide which textbook to get, and I still, it's so vivid in my mind because I like was so afraid of making the wrong decision and learning from the wrong textbook, but now I look back and it really doesn't matter because human anatomy is the same for everybody in every book. So just pick whatever book fits your learning style. But I ultimately took the unconventional approach and I went for the team or theme time i don't even know how to say it the team time theme alice of anatomy i'll put it right here and i decided to go with this over netters also up here which is what most people use in med school again i'll link all this stuff below so you have access to getting one of these resources if you want to all the links on everything i talk about will be in the description box below so the reason i went with team or theme over netters is because i felt like netters was a little i don't know it was more like stylized diagrams and I, I don't know it, it didn't seem real it was like a coloring book to me it didn't seem official in my eyes but now i look back and i've used netters a million times just going back to check an anatomy resource that's usually my go-to but at the time i felt like team or theme was a better option for me i liked the pictures more i felt like they were a little more descriptive i could understand the images a little better it basically just clicked a little better in my head and that's what you ultimately have to decide which textbook is best for your learning style. I tried to find my anatomy textbook so I could show you all how much abuse it has gotten over the years, but I think it is at my mom's house or something in storage. I promise you I didn't throw that away because that book was like my, my child. I held on to that book. It was my everything for like a year. And then I used it again when I was doing radiology residency. It was just, it was a part of me. It was my baby and I just, couldn't part with it, and I still have it to this day. And also, for those of you who don't know about... I mean, did I really just hit that? Give me a little, uh, what do you call it? Beep. So for those of you who don't know about med school, we do a cadaver lab or a gross anatomy lab in which we dissect a cadaver. This is a complete beast in itself and it requires a different textbook. We actually used to use the Gray's Anatomy Dissector textbook, I believe. This was a phenomenal resource. It kind of walks you through the entire process of dissecting a cadaver showing you anatomy, showing what you should pay attention to, and all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure like every med school recommends this textbook by now, but it seems to be like the gold standard. I use it as well, and I think you should get it if your school doesn't require it already. <laughs> Another great resource was the Netter's flashcards, which almost everybody in my class used as well. Again, I've said many times before, I just don't learn from flashcards. I don't know why, I just can't get the bigger picture when I'm looking at flashcards. I just feel like I'm going to the next subject so quickly and I 
I just don't catch on. It just doesn't work for me. I've never been a flashcard person, but for those of you who are flashcard people, get the Netters flashcards. They're actually really, really, really good. Pretty detailed as well and have some good pictures and they're portable. But nowadays, all of you all are doing everything portable on a tablet or whatnot. Let me know in the comments, do you all even use textbooks anymore? We were big into textbooks when I went to med school, but I know some people don't even use textbooks now. Everything's electronic, which is weird to me because I always like to like write something. I can't have it on a tablet, but different generation now, so let me know what you use. All right, so now we're going to switch gears and talk about another resource, which I wish I had when I was in med school or any time during my medical training. That resource is none other than KinHub, which is sponsoring today's video. Let's face it, human anatomy, by now you know, is complex and beautiful and can be a challenge to learn. Anatomy education lags behind today's constantly advancing technology, that is, until KenHub came along. With over 500 plus video tutorials, quizzes, and 5,000 high quality interactive atlas images, KenHub content is expanded every week. For example, let's go ahead and check out the bones of the wrist and hand, which can be a challenge for a lot of people to learn. So you can read a little bit first and then watch the tutorial introducing you to the anatomy of the wrist and hand. They also have more detailed videos to watch afterwards. And if that's not good enough, you can actually quiz yourself at the end of each section to reinforce your knowledge. And the best part about all this is that you can use the link in my description to get 10% off of KenHub today. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so now that we talked about resources, I'll give you some tips on how I drilled this kind of stuff in my head and committed it to memory forever. During Gross Anatomy Lab, I would oftentimes spend many late hours in the cadaver lab by myself, just me and my study partner, and we would just go through anatomy alone. It was kind of creepy to walk into the anatomy lab full of bodies at like 10 p.m. at night, but you kind of get used to it after a while. So I'll give you an example. We were having such trouble learning the coronary artery and vein anatomy. So what we did is we essentially went to the cadaver lab late one night, literally opened up the chest, took the heart out of the chest, brought it to a table, had two stools, and we went in and just rotated that heart around. We looked at every single artery, vein, valve. I mean, you name it, we just studied it, studied it, studied it completely until we knew everything about the heart. And that kind of practice is invaluable. You have it in your hands, you compare it to a textbook and you just commit it to memory that way. It's just a visual representation in real life. So that's what we would do anytime we were having trouble learning something, we would just go there, have the anatomy textbook, have the actual human body part, and learn it. Another thing I did is I used to draw a lot of the time. So I'm not that good of an artist, but if I was learning the upper extremity anatomy, for example, I would draw pretty detailed diagrams while comparing it to the textbook. And this kind of helped again, just drill it in more because of repetition, repetition, repetition. The more I saw it and the more I drew it, I would commit it to memory. And then also what I would do when I wasn't drawing detailed diagrams is I would just go to a big whiteboard and draw out the anatomy. And then sometimes my study partner would draw out the anatomy and we would just kind of compare diagrams and try to label them ourselves. For instance, when we had to learn the external carotid artery anatomy, we would draw out the branches of the external carotid artery and then we would have each other label them and we would also come up with fun mnemonics on how to memorize them. Like I always say, repetition is key, especially in regards to rote memorization, which is exactly what anatomy is. Okay, so I've given you all this stuff, but how essentially have I mastered all of human anatomy? Well, the short answer is you really never stop using anatomy throughout your entire medical career. Whatever specialty you go into, you're going to be using anatomy. And if you go into a surgical subspecialty, you are even more so likely to learn anatomy and know it cold. And surgical anatomy is an even bigger beast than just learning anatomy to begin with. It's completely different in the real life world, and that's why surgical subspecialties are so long. But the good thing is if you are in the surgical subspecialty, you are going to be drilling that specific anatomy into your head for the entire five, six, seven plus years. And like I said, you're just going to know it cold because you're going to study nonstop, you're going to see it on a daily basis, recognize the surgical anatomy on a daily basis, and it's eventually just going to stick in your head. If it doesn't stick by the end of a surgery residency, I don't know what else you can do, but I promise you it will. And furthermore, if you decide on a specialty such as radiology, you will devote your life even further to learning anatomy because that's pretty much what my entire field is. And let me just say, I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on human anatomy in medical school, but then I went into radiology residency and I realized I had a ton to learn because radiologic anatomy 
is entirely different from any other anatomy. It's like you're learning how to walk again. In radiology, you're going to be focusing on cross-sectional anatomy, which is entirely different than learning anatomy in med school. Look how far I've come, and now I'm a master. Well, I, I wouldn't say master, because I feel like master. Is expert higher than master? I'm definitely an expert in radiology, but I don't know if master is master above an expert? I don't know, let me know in the comments below. So in summary, I just wanted to do this video to give you all some pointers, tips, and resources on how to learn anatomy efficiently and effectively. What it basically comes down to is that you need to engulf yourself in anatomy if you want to learn it. I always tell people it's kind of like learning a foreign language. You can't just learn a foreign language part time. You can't just pick up a few words on the weekends here and there and expect to go to another country and speak the language with the locals. It doesn't work that way. If you want to learn a foreign language, you have to immerse yourself in the culture. You have to go to that country. You have to eat, sleep, and breathe that language, and eventually it'll become second nature to you. Anatomy is no different. So that officially concludes this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other resources that you know of that may benefit all the people that watch this channel. Make sure you smash that like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video.